Good morning guys, Mr. Middleson here. Today we're going to talk about solving quadratics using square roots. Previously we had talked about solving quadratics by graphing, and now I'm kind of trying to connect um, that with um, the other form. That's what this next couple weeks will be about, is showing the different ways that we can solve quadratics. Okay, so after today's lesson you should be able to solve quadratics by using square roots. So, without graphing, by using square roots. Before we get to that, um, kind of refresh how we solved by graphing. Alright, so we had a, um, let's say we have x squared minus 9 equals 0. In order to graph that, what we would do is we would plug in um, x equals opposite b over 2a. Find that, and give, that gives us our axis of symmetry, which is at x equals 0 axis of symmetry which cuts our parabola in half. From there we plug 0 in because it has to be the vertex on the axis of symmetry. Plug it into our table. Plot the point. Choose points on the left and right side of our um, vertex. <coughs> plug those in and plot those as well. And then we could find our solution happen where our graph crossed the x-axis. Okay, and here we can see that our solution happens at 3 and negative three. Okay, if you need help with graphing, make sure you go back and review the practice um, problems that I gave you and the video notes as well, because um, that will be important. But I want you to see that this is the solution and this is how we did it. All right, just like when we did systems of equations first semester, we're gonna find that there are a lot of ways that we can solve these problems. Okay, and the first new way that we're gonna um, choose to solve these problems is by using square roots. <clears throat> okay, first, there needs to be a reason why we choose a different method. And the reason here is that, um, well, graphing has a couple downfalls. It takes a long time. Even if you're good at it, it takes longer than you would want to solve it. Um, also, graphing just isn't very accurate if you're graphing by hand. Um, it's not going to be, um, or it's very rare to have. Um, to have a lot of the good, nice solutions when you're solving by graphing. Okay, using square roots or the other methods that we're going to use today or find out today will help us get answers that don't come out so nice, but it helps us to be very accurate in finding them. Okay, the nice part about square roots um, it's one of the easier methods outside of um, outside of graph or or when you're solving quadratics is that it's pretty simple. It's kind of easy to know when to do it, and um, it's pretty simple to do it. And you, we'll talk about when we want to choose uh, which method later when we decide all the methods. But you want to use square roots when b is zero. Okay, so when b equals zero, that is a um, indication that you should, pro should probably solve it by using square roots. And you're going to do that just by isolating x, getting x by itself, like we've been doing since the beginning of algebra. So for this problem, we have x squared minus nine equals zero. We'll isolate x. Add 9 to both sides. It's not x squared by itself. So x squared equals 9. And then um, to get x all the way by itself, I'm going to do the inverse of x squared and square root it. I square root the left side, I also have the square root the right side. So that gives us x. And here, <coughs> it's going to be important for us to remember to take the positive and negative root. Okay, so. 3 times 3 is 9, yes, but also negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So we have our solutions x equals plus or minus 3. And you should notice that these are the same solutions. Whether we solved it by graphing or whether we solved it by using square roots, it's the same thing. All right, <clears throat> let's go through a few more examples of solving um, by using square roots. And just know that these will be connected, that we will have the same solution. All right, so number one, again, we're isolating x. I'm going to add 98 to both sides. Hopefully I gave myself enough space. So I have 2x squared equals 98. Divide by 2 to get x squared by itself. So I have x squared equals 49. And then take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus 7. Make sure you get into the habit of 
uh, taking that plus and minus here. Okay, a lot of people will go through the chapter, and I'll say it a million times, but they'll just still put the positive number that will lose you points, and it will miss the solution. Okay, imagine the parabola only being half a parabola. You miss a solution. <laughs> All right, number two, same kind of thing. We will add 25 to both sides. T squared equals 25. Take the square root to get t all the way by itself. And so t will equal plus and minus 5. All right. <clears throat> if you feel confident, you can go and try number 3 and 4 and fast forward me and see if you get the same things. If not, make sure you continue to follow along. Okay, so for number 4, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. It gives me 3n squared equals 0. Kind of see where this is going, but I'll go through the process. Divide both sides by 3. n squared will equal 0. Take the square root. n equals 0. Okay, make sure here that you do not put plus or minus 0. 0 is a neutral number. It's not positive or negative, so plus or minus would mean nothing. Okay. <coughs> And our final problem, if you turn the video back on to see what you're supposed to do because your calculator told you domain error, let's look. Have 2g squared plus 32, so I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. 2g squared equals negative 32. Now you can, should kind of see what's happening here. Divide both sides by 2. g squared will equal negative 16. Now, if you type this into your calculator, your calculator will tell you it can't work. Your calculator's right. Okay, if you're trying to do this by yourself, you might do this and get like negative 4 and say plus or minus 4. But remember, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. A positive times a positive is positive. A negative times a negative is positive. So there's no number that multiplies itself to give you a negative number. No real number. Okay, And so here we have no solution. And this is the same thing that we would have if we graphed it. Now I'll just sketch this graph really quick down here between these two graphs, or between, sorry, these two problems. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so kind of looking at how our graph should look, A is positive, so we know our graph opens up. B is 0, so our, our axis of symmetry is at 0. I'm going to plug that in, 0 plus 32. We have a point at 0, 0,32. Let's imagine that that's what that is. Okay. And it opens up. That's all that's really important right now because you see that this graph will not intersect the x axis. There will be no solutions here. So even when we're solving it using a different method, we would get no solutions. Okay. All right. That's solving by square roots. We'll look at that and make sure we connect them. Uh, the methods to the objective answers uh, Monday. See ya.